25 years after his passing, a former friend of star wrestler Morris Tillett was claiming to regularly play chess with him. Here is the incredible story of the man who is said to have inspired the character Shrek and the power of his haunted death mask. Morris Tillett was a French wrestler, born in Russia in 1903, who was known during his lifetime as the French Angel. Remembered as highly intelligent and able to speak 14 languages, Morris aspired at a young age to be an actor. With the Russian Revolution underway, he and his widowed mother returned to France when he was 14. While a normal-looking child, by the age of 17, Morris's head, chest, hands and feet had started to expand, and at 19 he was diagnosed with acromegaly. This condition is usually caused by a tumour on the pituitary gland and creates excessive growth hormone production. Because Morris developed the condition in adulthood, rather than increasing his height, the condition caused his bones to thicken, resulting in his pronounced facial features and massive bulk. Because his voice was also affected, he gave up the law degree he was pursuing and joined the French Navy, which is where he learnt to wrestle. On leaving the Navy, he trained in wrestling and performed successfully in Europe and England, eventually departing for America. There Morris secured his place in the public eye as a successful professional wrestler, often finishing off his opponents with his signature bear hug. He was also studied by anthropologists in the US. They described him as the closest living human to a Neanderthal man known to exist. Seemingly a showman and quite unselfconscious about his appearance, Maurice even posed in front of the Neanderthal exhibit in Chicago's Field Museum for Natural History. Being incredibly strong, Morris also staged events where he would pull along a train, bus or streetcar. As well as his moniker of the French Angel, Morris was also sometimes referred to as the ugliest man in the world. While he wrestled and won against all the greatest wrestlers of his day, his unique looks also earned him many short speaking roles in French and Hollywood films, appearing with the likes of Josephine Baker and in the first Superman movie. By 1946, he became known as the highest paid sports figure in the US. Although his public persona was that of a ferocious cad, Morris was personally described as kind, gentle, educated and well-mannered. He also had a great love of the game of chess, which he used to play with his friend Patrick Kelly on a regular basis. They played together at the home of the successful businessman near Braintree, Massachusetts, and if reports are accurate, Morris felt trusting enough to confide in Kelly as they sat opposite each other. Sometimes during their game, Morris would raise his head, look sadly at Kelly, and groan about how awful it was to be imprisoned in his body. His condition apparently caused him a lot of severe pain and medical complications. Taking its toll, in 1954, Morris was recovering from pneumonia and suffering from a heart condition when he passed away at the age of 51. Only hours before, his manager had predeceased him, and Morris had commented that there was no longer anything to hold him here. A woman he adored had also turned down his offer of marriage. Patrick Kelly owned transport companies, textile mills, toy manufacturing firms and shipping lines. The sudden premature passing of Morris apparently shattered him and he focused on his business in later years. In 1979, 25 years after the loss of his friend, Kelly visited a computer exhibition and was impressed by the computers on display, in particular the fact that computers could play chess. His love of chess rekindled, Kelly purchased a computer immediately which he placed in his study. 
Of course, he hadn't forgotten his friend and positioned his cast of Morris Tillett opposite where he sat at the computer. The story behind Morris's bust was that it was sculpted from a facial mould which Morris had given his permission to be taken during his final hours. Known as a death mask, it is more accurately described as a life casting, as Morris was alive at the time. The subsequent bust, with a limited number of others, is dated 1958 and so created four years after Morris's passing. Having been taken from a mould of Morris's very unique head, each is therefore its exact size and shape and therefore an accurate 3D portrait of which Kelly had acquired his own piece. Kelly programmed some great chess moves on the computer and became glued to the game from the very first day. One night he noticed that the computer was playing back according to some famous moves invented by an 18th century French grandmaster. These were the favourite chess moves of his dear friend Morris. Kelly continued to play for three long hours and finally became tired and ready for bed. He went over to disconnect the plug and was shocked to realise that he had forgotten to plug in the computer. The computer had been working without electricity. Despite a limited knowledge of computers, Kelly was well aware that a computer isn't able to work without electricity. He notified the computer company of the incident and they sent out a mechanic who found the whole incident incredulous. The technician confirmed that a computer can't play on its own because any chess moves need to be programmed, let alone working without electricity. The computer had been manufactured by a well-known company who became worried about their reputation and provided Kelly with a new computer. The new computer was also equipped with a chess game containing 22 simple and 60 complicated chess moves. At one stage, Kelly decided to publish a new chess move in his local newspaper. As soon as he had worked out the move on the computer, the machine started to play back on its own. Kelly became angry and turned the computer off, then was astonished to see that the computer was still working. He pulled out the plug, but the computer continued to display the last move on the monitor. Now intrigued, Kelly made another move. He was suddenly reminded of a game he had played with Morris on April 12, 1952, a game that he would never forget because of a strong coincidence that occurred within it. Both he and Morris had made the same move. The computer was doing the same thing 28 years later. Again, Kelly informed the company and a team of electronic engineers attended and checked everything thoroughly, even taking away the bust for further investigation. The computer worked fine that night while the experts carried out an x-ray of the sculpture and many other tests. None of the tests revealed any interfering components within the solid plaster bust, which was returned the following day. This was when again the computer started with all the unexplained phenomena and could operate without electricity as long as Morris's bust was nearby. The computer experts were never able to give any satisfactory explanation, but believers in the supernatural claimed that Morris's spirit used Kelly's mental power to run the computer. According to Kelly, he became able to determine when Morris was around, simply by seeing if the computer operated without electricity. He would set up the pieces and, often in mid-game, the computer would start playing with master moves above its normal level, indicating that Morris was present. Kelly was able to pull out the plug and the game would continue. In intervening periods, when Morris was obviously not around, Kelly was happy to think of his friend's spirit roaming free of his bodily burden. And without a scientific explanation, he continued to enjoy Morris's master moves in advanced chess games for years to come, 
in what is to some an unsolved mystery.